There is Bible hour this morning, so if you have children and you want to take advantage of that, you can exit at this time. That way they can learn from God's Word as we learn from God's Word on our level. Good morning, church. I uh, want to uh, uh, say, first of all, that it has been an incredible week, and um, uh, it's been a challenging week, but I want to share with you a couple of uh, uplifting things that occurred this week, and uh, even from uh, the challenges that come, the youth were on a trip this week, and uh, Kylie got stung by a bee. She's very, very highly allergic, had to go to the hospital. I think that uh, took Macy and Preston off guard, but getting her to an urgent care and and uh, for her to have to have IVs, that's how um, allergic she is. And so they uh, pushed several bags of IV on her, but she's here with us this morning. She's doing fine. She made it through it, and the next day she had a birthday. So happy birthday to you. So uh, that's good, yes? <laughs> happy birthday. So... We're glad that you're here. We're glad that at peril of life, you went with young people and shared that time. So that's a big deal. We have a great youth program going on, and uh, we're blessed by that. Uh, another thing is that, um, now I didn't ask permission this morning because I know I probably would have been told, Ella Mullins was baptized into Christ yesterday. And so, <laughs> so we're, we're excited about that. And she's in children's worship helping Bible hours. So... Uh, probably to avoid all your hugs, I imagine, as quiet as she is. But uh, uh, we're excited about that. I know mom and dad were excited about that and the family that were here with us yesterday when that occurred, and so we're blessed in many ways with that. Today we're going to get into God's Word, and, and I have a special lesson for you this morning. We're going to talk about, first of all, Happy Father's Day to you, uh, all of you fathers who are out there, and uh, some of you young, young guys, would you, would you grab these baskets? All fathers... I want you to raise your hand. We have a gift for you this morning. And so we need a few guys to help pass those out if they will. Uh, two or three guys over here. If you're dad, hold your hand up. And uh, this is a message from your wife. You need a breath mint, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, uh, we just want to let you know that we appreciate you being here as a father. And, and it, it makes all the difference in the world to have fathers and father figures and uh, that would actually include nearly every single man in the audience because even if you're not a father, here in this building you are a father figure. And that makes uh, a difference in the world too because it is important to look at those things. So we want to make sure that all of you get one of those gifts this morning and uh, be reminded of how important your role is in this church and in the world. I uh, started putting the service together this morning, you know, and uh, on Mother's Day, I had this a really great little video that I showed, and I, I found one for Father's Day, and I watched it a couple of times, and it was a, a little bit longer and stuff, and it hit me as I was started to put it in the computer system, as fathers, what can I do for fathers to lift you up and, and make sure that you have a, day, a good day? And my thought was, make sure they get out early. Amen. There we go. So cut the video, no video. We're just going to have a short lesson this morning to lift you up and challenge you a little bit, and, and then the time will be yours. So, uh, happy Father's Day to you. Being a father is an important thing. Uh, one more announcement. Anybody else left? We still have plenty of gifts. Anybody didn't get one? All right. Um, I wanted to uh, read this to you, and uh, I can't see it on my computer back there, so... Uh, this is from the group in India. You saw some pictures, I believe, the week that, uh, that I was gone on vacation where they were passing out the food and making a difference for the people there. And this is the end of a long letter that he sent to us. Convey our beloved brothers and sisters who donated money to help people who are suffering in COVID pandemic. Your labors are not in vain in the Lord. We can see light in many eyes. It is great joy to know someone cares. Our prayers have been answered. Your love and kindness gives us great relief. My dreams came true. May God care you all in His safe hands. With gratitude, the EKV Prasada Rao Minister. And so I, I wanted you to see that because he took the time to write, write out a special thank you for that as we uh, reach out to that world. Would you hit PC on that uh, uh, control. Let's make sure that that's centered. I don't know. Maybe it is, and it's just off this morning. Maybe, that may be my fault, David, actually. So, 
Uh, anyway, but happy Father's Day, and we your gifts help make a better Father's Day, of course, in India, and uh, so that they can continue to provide for families and make their difference there. This morning, I want to share with you, first of all, some some negative concepts about fatherhood. When a father is absent, here is this is uh, uh, information that was put together in 2019. So this is not real old information, it's not 21, it's 2019, it takes a while to put these surveys surveys together. When in a home the father is absent, 63% of youth suicides occur from that kind of situation. 90% of all runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of all behavioral disorders come from children from fatherless homes. 71% of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. 85% of all young people in detention centers are from fatherless homes. Fatherless homes are more likely to produce uh, pregnancies. That's uh, by male or female, by the way. Uh, Four times greater risk And I don't mean the males being pregnant, I mean them being fathers, right? (laughs) Just wanted to clarify, didn't want to lose you in that thought, right? So seven times more likely to become pregnant, four times greater risk of poverty. Ten times more likely to abuse drugs, and two times more likely to suffer obesity. And so we see these things. It is shocking, but not surprising. It has been affirmed by decades by psychologists, criminologists, educators, and Christians. Now, uh, media and the influential populace, which would be anything that our teenagers read on their cell phones, okay? Uh, We are still trying to play catch up to social media, where social media is constantly broadcasting uh, half-truths, right? Constantly. But media and the influential populace defines a father's role as one that is diminished, laughable, and unnecessary. And uh, if, if you uh, have watched any sitcoms in primetime television, you will learn very quickly, all these fathers that are on primetime television, they look like children, they act like children, and they're made fun of and made to look like idiots all the time, and, is, and uh, it's a laughable diminished role, and that is not what God intended. Matter of fact, in reality, whether by birth of his own children or child, or by choice through relationship. Do you understand what I mean? You may never have a child of your own, but as long as you are a part of a church family, you have children that you will play a father role to. And we need you to do that. We need men who can teach our young people how to, to change out a headlight switch on a, on a truck or a car or, or change the oil or uh, change out the spark plugs. We need father figures who can teach them to swing a hammer. You know? By the way, that's not holding the handle halfway up, Okay. By choice through relationship, his role is one that is influential, powerful in building the future. And it's important for us to recognize that. And as fathers, we need to be reminded that the greatest and strongest legacy that you can ever set in place is the one that occurs through your children. What do you leave to your children? And we know that from history from our lives years and those of you who, like me who have had a father pass away to sit there why I say what I share about my father is his legacy to life to what he was able to accomplish and my father in his shortcomings and fallacies was an incredible Christian man who devoted his life to the church and the message of the gospel. He was the greatest personal worker that I've ever known in my life, not just because he was my father, but because of his abilities and the hours that he spent. And I remember going on Bible studies with him, and he would use the old Jewel Miller film strip. Now, young people, you have no idea what that is, and that's okay. But the old Jewel Miller film strips, and he would start it to play, and he would stop it and say, 
right here, you probably have this question, and let me answer that for you. And he would answer that question, then he would start it again and play a little while, and he would stop and say, here, do you have this question? I often have this. He knew the questions that people were going to ask based on what the film was presenting. Because he loved to teach people about the difference that Jesus Christ could make in your life. The strongest men in the world have nothing to do with their physical abilities. It has to do with their ability to stand tall on what they believe in. Because that's harder than lifting 400 pounds of free weights above your head. Stature has nothing to do with it. Muscle has nothing to do with it. Matter of fact, would you consider Paul as one of the tallest men who have ever walked through history? Would you say yes? Give me a yes. This means yes. This means no. It's okay. You're not in a lecture class at a university. You can speak. Would you agree? Would you agree Paul was one of the tallest men who ever walked in history? Do you realize that there is a first century witness who talks about Paul. Now, whether right or wrong, it doesn't matter, but if it's right, it's right. And he said he was surprised when he met Paul that Paul was a short man, that he was four foot, about four foot eight tall, and that his dark hair had a red tinge to it from being in the sun, and that he had a bald crown and very bowed legs. And I love this one. I understand. You don't have to laugh at this. A unibrow. (laughs) Now, that ain't funny. (laughs) But in his fallacies, Paul was one of the tallest men who ever walked in history. And so we think about those things and how we affect the other people. That calmness, how to build a powerful future. And so today I want to share with you just a few short things. Steps of a godly father. How do we as father, as fathers make a difference and as we as chosen fathers make a difference in the lives of those that we come into contact with? And so the first one is, a father always steps forward to grow in the Lord. He steps forward to grow in the Lord. 1 Timothy 6.12, fight the good fight of faith, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight. Stand when others won't. Be on the things that God has set before us, the tallest man that you can be before the world who is watching you. And that gives us incredible opportunities to make a difference on Facebook and social media and at our job places and even at the local restaurant or someplace like that. By the way, if you're wearing a, uh, gentlemen, if you're wearing, if you're going to lunch today, and I I don't see any of our t-shirts with the logo on it, I just want to remind you, if you go into a restaurant with a t-shirt with one of our logos on it, don't leave 50 cents or a dollar tip. (laughs) Cheapskapes. Remember that you're representing us as a church. We've got some uh, new stickers, uh, small stickers, color stickers that to, to, goes on a car window or you might want to put it on a coffee. You know what? Don't do that if you have anger management issues. Come see me first. <laughs> Don't put that on your car, gentlemen, if you have road rage issues. If you have a felony warrant out for your arrest, We don't want you to put it on your car either. Or wear one of our t-shirts. We need you to step forward and begin the good fight first, then we'll give you a t-shirt and a sticker. Once you step forward in the Lord. 2 Peter 3, 17 and 18, Therefore, dear friends, since you have been uh, forewarned, forewarned, Be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. You know, I have 
sat in my office and visited with people whose fathers were abusive. And I see the results of that abuse. And it can last a lifetime. I uh, told my wife when we were younger, we had our first big fight. And uh, I was I was pretty mean, you know, in that even. And I turned to her and said, I've never been so disappointed in somebody in my entire life. And of course, what'd she do? She started crying. <laughs> Which is exactly what I meant to do. But true love doesn't do those kind of things. And I had to apologize and make it right. And I'm glad that my children were not old enough. Uh, my children weren't even here yet. But I'm glad they weren't, that they didn't see their father manipulate, make an effort to manipulate his wife like that. The world is a lawless place and it gives to us as far as God's law, right? And it gives to us the picture of fathers that is 100% incorrect. But we need to stand tall on God's Word to know, 1 Corinthians 13, a love that is greater than the world can understand, who keeps no record of wrongs, who always protects. That's the reason why we don't make jokes about our wives, gentlemen. And ladies... You thought you were going to get out of it today, didn't you? We don't make jokes about how stupid our husband is either. You can let the world do that. We may be in the world sometimes where we're not of the world. Because if we're carried away by error of lawless, of the lawless attitudes of the world, we will fall from our secure positions. But our goal is to grow in the grace and knowledge, the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. And the church said, Amen. All right. Step forward. My uh, controller's acting up here a little bit. The second thing is, step towards his family. Put his family first. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord, the 127th Psalm says. A gift to you. A precious gift to grow, to learn, to teach them about the joy that er there is in knowing Christ Jesus. To stand tall. My father was a man who had a, a, um, a hard background, you would call it. He didn't grow up in a Christian family. He didn't know about going to church. and He'd never really gone to church. As a matter of fact, uh, when he was young, mom and he first got married, he was a water well digger in Arizona. And they would dig wells in the heat. And one of the things that they would do was they would have boxing matches and they would challenge guys doing other things out in the field. You know, other water wells, uh, oil wells and things. And and my dad was a bare knuckle boxer, and he would he knocked a lot of guys out. And he was a shorter man, but that's one of the reasons we five boys never messed with him. We knew he would knock us out. But he was a man who taught us, even in his toughness, that there was someone greater than him. There's a four-generation fade you may have seen that I shared this on my Facebook page this last week, and I thought it was really important. This came from an elder in the church, and he said, you know, there's a four-generation fade, and this is what I see. When parents don't make church a priority for their kids, those kids grow up and make it less of a priority for their kids. And those kids grow up and make it no priority for their children. And then those children will grow up and have no concept of God at all. When being a part of God's church, when being a part of God's 
people's lives is not a priority. You have already set to ensure that your legacy beyond you will fail in life. And that's hard, isn't it? 1 Timothy 5, 7, and 8. Give the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So we have to take a look at that and and see what are we providing for our household? Are we taking care of our family members? That is priority number one. That's our responsibility as family members to take care of those who are around us to ensure that they have the things they need for life. And by the way, there's not a qualifier here if you get along with them. Wouldn't that be nice? got some family members I care not to see ever again. I do. But if they call me, I will provide for them whatever they need to survive. Now most of those family members is because they've chosen not to follow Christ. They've chosen a worldly way, you know. They can't figure out why they're broke all the time, but they always have money for beer and cigarettes. Why is that? You remember that statistic I just put up about fathers being absent. By the way, a father can be physically present and still absent at the same time. So we must be present as we provide for our families. Next, we need to step into the world so that we can shine. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Does this sound familiar? Yes? I've only used this scripture about three times in the last year because it's incredibly important. All this is from God who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ, not counting people's sins. And He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making His appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become his righteousness. And I think that's cut off there. I I, I want to share this with you, and I, I hope I've shared this with you once before, but I hope you will understand how important it would be if the President of the United States, right, whether you like him or not, doesn't matter, if he called you and said, I want you to be the ambassador to China or to France or to England, and I need you to pack up your family and be ready to go by the end of next week. How important would your role become in the world, right? But we look at ourselves and think that our roles are minuscule, that they're not important in life. And yet he tells us we are his ambassadors to the world that is lost. That our message we move forward with is one that you can be reconciled to a father who wants a relationship with you. And I love this word that we know that in the power of Christ, right? Because the same power that raised him from the dead is at work in us on a daily basis. We talked about that last week. And so we can do all things through Him who strengthens us. Through Jesus Christ who strengthens us, right? And here's the word that you only hear, you'll never hear it used in any other place except for when it comes to appointing an ambassador, especially in the United States. And in the oath that an ambassador takes for the United States, the president looks at him and says, I appoint you plenty potentiary. Meaning that I give you all the authority of power and whatever it takes for you to carry this office to its fullest length 
in representation of the people of the United States. And so when I look at this word that we are Christ ambassadors, that word comes to my mind that we are plenipotentiary as his ambassadors to the world, that we have the power and the ability to make a difference with those that we come into contact with. And I want to know, do you as a father see yourself this way this morning? You have been empowered by your Savior Jesus Christ to make a difference. Fathers need to step up to glorify the Lord. Step up to glorify the Lord. You know, there was a time in my life when even as a minister, I would go into restaurants and I would sit down. And you look at the crowd and, and uh, uh, here's, a good, here's a good one. I went into, uh, I've had some weird experiences in my life. I really have. And one of them was I was asked uh, by a, a gentleman uh, if I would ride a Harley and ride with a group of Harley riders in Tulsa and would I do a wedding setting on a Harley as he and his bride were on Harleys in front of me. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> you know, and, the, and the, the cake was really cool. I had this cake, and it was, the, it was the wheel and tire of a motorcycle. Not laying down, standing up. It was this wide and this high. And it had, it had forks that started coming off of the center of it. Man, it was beautiful even had holes through it I mean it was I I don't know who made that cake but I bet it was expensive and it was it tasted good but you're sitting there and you're they had barbecue and they bring the barbecue out to the table and I look at Janine and I, I thought for a minute I don't want to pray in this circumstance And I looked up and there was a guy in the corner had a biker's vest on and had a cross on the back of it. Bikers for Christ. And I thought, you big dummy. This is your opportunity to glorify the Lord. Where are your opportunities, fathers, to glorify the Lord? You know, I, I said here not too long ago to a small group of members we were talking about, as we as a church, do we love and let people come in? And no matter what their background is. And several years ago, there was a young man who walked into the church at Sand Springs who was fighting the desire of homosexuality. Hadn't seen him in years, didn't know that. But I walked up and put my arm around him and let him know I was glad he was there. Because we always love the sinner and look for the opportunity to get the sin out of their life. So we look for every opportunity as men to stand tall and glorify the Lord in all that we do. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created, and have their being. Reminds me of John chapter 1. God's, He deserves just for all the gifts He's given to us in life. And I wonder this morning how many guys are fishing on the lake haven't even thought about worship, worshiping the Father that the lake wouldn't be there if God hadn't given it to them. I hope they don't catch anything. Isn't that nice of me? That wasn't very nice, was it? I hope they catch so many they fill their freezer up to the fullest and next Sunday they'll make it to church. But He is worthy of you taking the time to give Him glory. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God in order that we who are first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of His glory. You think there's a theme in God's Word? Don't be afraid for I am with... I love these verses. Isaiah chapter 43 applies to the Israelites, right? But one of the things that is great about the prophecy 
of our prophets through the ages is that often he's also talking about today. What we do today as Christians, talking about who we are and what we're going to be. And this is one of those, uh, this three verses are just like that. Isaiah 43, 5 through 7. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Don't we need to hear that today? Don't be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. Here we go. The eyes talking about us. The children that would belong to the Lord. I will bring them from all over the world to me and gather you from the west. And I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, don't hold back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. See, this sermon is not just about fathers this morning. My sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth, and everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And so I want to remind you of this fact, that while we are to be about the gospel, while we are to be about the good news, that our purpose is not the good news. The good news sharing of the gospel of Christ gets us to where we can be who we need to be. That by that sharing, we glorify His name. That's why we were created. That's why the opportunity to share the message of reconciliation was handed to us so that in that sharing of the gospel, that in sharing of that reconciliation message, that God is glorified before all. And so I want to tell you this this morning, that as a father, that if you will take these steps in life, that your legacy on this earth will live forever. from generation to generation, as you train up your children in the way that they should go. And this church is incredibly blessed with godly men who are ready to step up and be a father or a father figure for life. And so we thank God this morning. And if you haven't been that father, then it's time to begin the steps that will lead you to a victorious life. One that Paul says we are more than conquerors through him. It's time to start that. Let's pray together. And then we're going to have an invitation song and if we can help you set your life right or or be blessed by surrounding you in prayer we want to give you that opportunity but before we do let's go to prayer go to our father in prayer for our dads who are here this morning would you join me please <clears throat> mighty god and father we come before you this morning just to give you praise and adoration first of all lord because you are an incredible and mighty god and father in life we are challenged to step up and step forward and into and father we want to do that we want to become the the fathers and the dads that we need to as a earthly as human figures father that we would let your light shine and your glory be seen and father when we fall short when we lose our tempers when we make mistakes help us to rise up and to shine for we're reminded that the light has come and that it is our life to shine his love to the world that is lost father i thank you this morning for the opportunity to praise and give adoration to your name for the opportunity to remember your son who died on the cross father to lift our hearts and minds before your mighty throne with confidence because we are your children but Father, this morning I pray that you would give special blessings to each and every dad that is here. Father, to, to every dad, to every granddad, great-granddad, Father, just bless them, direct their steps, widen their territories, Father, and allow them to be incredible providers. 
And Father, help us to be challenged when we see young people who may not have a father figure in their life to become the father figure that they need, that they would be blessed and raised up. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Would you stand with me and sing? For all that you've done, I will.